Hello and welcome back friends, Buddy here at House of Props and in today's video I'm going to be building this Easterling soldier helmet from Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings, specifically the Two Towers. I've been wanting to make this helmet for quite a while and a few of you have asked me to make it so it felt about time. And the thing I particularly like about this project is it's really easy to assemble. It's just a few pieces, but the part that had me a little concerned was the fabric. As many of you know, I don't typically work with fabric in my shop, but this project really needed it. So I'm happy to share the results and the techniques with you. So let's get started. The only version of the Easterling helmet that I have in my possession is the one on the figure from Toy Biz. Even though it is only 6 inch scale, they managed to get a lot of detail into the small sculpt and it really helped having a physical 3D object to look at. I started with the top dome pieces and beveled the curved edges so that I could achieve the sharp circular edge. Typically I would close up the darts in the pieces first, but in this case I'm going to attach the two pieces together. To attach I'm using contact cement. Using an old brush I apply a decent layer but not too thick onto the foam's edge. You want to make sure you have an even layer over the entire area. It's hard to see here but when the cement is wet it has a shine to it and for it to stick together properly we have to wait for it to dry a little. To speed up that process, I use a heat gun on a low setting and slightly dry out the cement until it loses its shine but remains tacky to the touch. While I do that, I would really appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button, if you haven't already. It's completely free to you and it will help this channel to grow and thrive. And if you click the notification bell, you can get notified when new projects drop. Thank you. Now the cement is ready, the pieces can be attached. When doing this, I try to make sure the visible part of the pieces, in this case the top, will be as smooth as possible, so, so I align this top edge before pressing the two faces together. Now the darts can be closed in the same manner, and we're left with the top of the helmet. Next I'm going to use the two curved pieces. This larger diameter curve will attach to the top dome, and you want to make sure that the same edge has a bevel on it because these pieces fit like so and we want to make sure this edge is, has a nice point. Next I took the face guard pieces and along the top edge there is a quarter inch wide space and you'll see why that's there for, in a minute. But for now I beveled all the other edges so when the helmet is being worn it doesn't look like it's thick foam, instead it'll look thinner like real metal. The pieces are attached to the inside of the helmet top like so. That quarter inch wide area is being glued to the inside edge of the top dome. Once the two face pieces are installed, they can be attached to each other. There are two points of contact, one on the forehead and the other at the chin. And I always use contact cement when attaching foam unless I let you know otherwise. Next we can add the crest spike on the front of the helmet. This piece sits centered like so right in the middle in the front and I'm going to use this edge to help cover and hide the center seam on the dome. Glue the edge into place and make sure it's firmly attached by pressing on the top and from the inside of the helmet. Now this edge doesn't look like it lines up correctly. That's not the case though. We have to stretch the foam to make it fit into the edge and it's this stretching that pulls the point for, of the crest forward so we can have the correct silhouette. Once that edge was glued down, I then attached the two half circle 2mm foam pieces. These attach to either side of the crest. Then I scored a line on the back of the diamond shaped pieces so the piece can bend correctly to fit into this sharp angled corner like so. Now since this one is really tight bend I'm going to use CA glue aka super glue to secure it in place. If I was using contact cement it would be really hard to get a nice crisp fold here without it trying to stick to in all the wrong spots. Then these 2mm foam face guard pieces can be attached here right against the nose guard and for these I'm back to using contact contact cement again. You want to make sure that where the pieces touch the nose guard and the dome top is really tight and that there's not too much of a gap showing. Next, the piece that looks like it came out of a Pac-Man game can be glued to the top of the dome. When I attached mine, I kept the seam in line with the seam underneath, but it's not necessary. 
Next, I took two scraps of 6mm foam and glued them together to get a 12mm thickness, and then traced the small circle onto the top. Then, using my rotary tool with a sanding drum, carved the piece into a small nub like this with a dent on the bottom so it could sit nicely on the top of the helmet. Now it was time to create the fins for the rear of the helmet. To make these flexible and poseable, I'm making each fin with two pieces of 2mm foam and some 16 gauge wire. I bend the wire to the desired curves and then super glue the wire onto one sheet of the 2mm foam that has the template outlined on it. Each fin gets two pieces of wire, one for each of the long curved edges. Then the second piece of 2mm foam can be glued on top of the first with the wire with contact cement. Make sure to really press and smooth out the foam so that you have really good contact on every millimeter. Then the fin shape can be cut out. Before attaching the fins, I'm going to add a spacer piece of foam to the inside edge here just along the rear of the helmet. This isn't included in the template, but I needed an extra strip so the helmet would fit snugly. If you find you need one as well, any scrap piece you have will do fine. Now back to the fins. I glued the two fins together along the edge like this, and then the center line of attachment can be centered and glued onto the top of the dome in line with the seam. In order to make the fins stand up, glue the small 6mm foam rectangle onto the base like so, and then lift the fins up to attach them to the sides of the rectangle. This will support the weight of the fins and keep them from flipping over and flipping around. Once secured, the wire can be bent to give them their desired shape. Now it was time to add all the scoring lines in script. I began by drawing everything onto the foam with a ballpoint pen using photos of Weta Collectibles scaled version of the helmet as reference for the script on the face guard, crest, and dome. Then all these lines can be lightly scored with a hobby knife, you don't want to push all the way through. The text took some time to score, but the final result was worth it. To make all these scored lines more pronounced, you can take a heat gun and heat the foam. The heat causes the foam to shrink ever so slightly, which in turn causes the lines to open up. Then I switch out the sanding drum for a smooth sanding tip on my Dremel and proceed to lightly clean up the edges and seams. Next I use some of this Quick Seal Plus from DAP to fill in the seams and any gaps. To apply, I smear the caulk onto the seam with a palette knife and then dip my finger in some water and use it to blend and smooth out the caulk like so. This step really helps hide any seams or gaps that you don't want to be visible. When the caulk has dried, I take some 400 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the areas where it was applied. You don't want to sand too hard or it will rip up the caulk and create an ugly surface. A light touch is all that's needed. Now, to make this area under the dome have a better transition between the pieces, I'm going to use some foam clay to create a subtle slope. I roll some out into a long roll and press this into the crease at this point where the face guard slopes up. Then dipping my finger in water, I smooth and blend it out so that there isn't any sign of an edge. Then I let the foam dry overnight before proceeding. The next day, I plot out the spots where rivets need to be placed and mark these spots with a ballpoint pen. Some are even on the foam between the fins and on the area where the foam clay was added. To make these rivets, I'm going to use 3D fabric paint, specifically one with a fine tip point, because I want these to be small, subtle rivets and not large ones like on a shield. After the paint has dried for several hours, the entire helmet can be primed with Plasti Dip. For this project, I apply three even layers and wait 20 minutes between each. This will give me sufficient coverage and allow me to avoid runs. Then, after the last coat, I let the helmet sit overnight to make sure it's completely cured. When the helmet isn't tacky to the touch, I prepare to paint it. The helmets in the film appear to be made of bronze, so I'm going to start with a brushed gold acrylic. I thin it with some acetone and use my airbrush to paint. The airbrush allows me to get a thin, even layer and avoid having any brush marks visible on the surface. It also helps to avoid getting globs of paint stuck in all the text and line details. Since I used acetone, the gold dries very quickly and I can continue by taking some metallic deep bronze and a mop brush. 
I take the mop brush and dab it into the paint, then pounce it onto a paper towel. This will even out the paint on the brush and remove any large deposits. Then I pounce the surface of the helmet. I don't want to cover the gold completely, but I want to build up a slight texture to make the helmet look like metal, and by letting the gold and the bronze colors work together, we can get a color like in the film. After the deep bronze has dried, I wanted to add a little grime into the nooks and crannies, so I make a burnt umber wash and splodge this around spots where it would build up naturally. They've marched all the way from ruin, so it's very unlikely their armor was pristine and clean. To blend the paint, I use a paper towel to lightly dab the edges, and this blends them out so they fade and look natural. With that, the helmet paint job is finished and we can move on to the fabric pieces, which if I have to admit, I'm a little concerned about. This is mainly because I haven't worked with a lot of fabric, but we'll see what happens. The face mask is a partial balaclava. It's pretty easy to assemble because it's, it's made up of only four pieces. For the fabric, I'm using a jersey knit. This way the fabric has enough stretch to it, it'll stay up without needing to add elastic or anything else like that. I sew the pieces together in the order I had them laid out with a sewing machine and I'm not using anything fancy, just a simple straight stitch. Then once everything is together, flip it inside out and that's that. So this is the front face of the mask, you can tell by the bumps for the nose and the chin, and I'm not hemming the top and the bottom, but there is enough fabric here that if you wanted to do that. For the rest of the fabric, I'm using a maroonish brown satin. You can use a silk if you have access to it. The fabric stores around me didn't have the correct color in stock, so I ended up buying this online. It was a lot cheaper anyway, so a good deal in the end, really. I started with the large piece for down the back of the helmet. The curved section of the piece will get attached to the inside of the helmet in a few. But first, we need to add the text on the other three sides. To do that, I'm using a metallic gold sharpie and drawing the text directly onto the fabric. In the research images, it looks looks like it's been added by hand and it's not woven into the fabric or embroidery. While writing the text, I noticed that the carrier liquid in the Sharpie started to spread out from the text creating a shadow, which I actually didn't hate. It actually gave the text more depth. To attach the fabric, I'm simply using hot glue. The glue will bond nicely to the foam and sink into the fabric threads. The fabric attaches right behind the face guard like so. I attach the two corners first. then the center back, then the rest can be glued down. The piece is designed so there is excess fabric so it'll create some folding and volume in the back and not look tight and stiff. The front scarf piece is cut out of the same fabric and receives the same text treatment along the outer curved edge. After countless research delves, I couldn't find any clear evidence that these were separate pieces. They looked connected, so that's the way I designed it, but if you wanted to, you could change it up. Then, the short ends can be hot glued just under the edge of the face guard like this. For both this front piece and the back, I squeeze a generous amount of hot glue onto the foam and then press the fabric into it and hold for a few seconds. By using a large amount of hot glue, it allows the glue to sink into the fibers of the cloth and into the pores of the foam, creating a more secure bond. And with that, the Easterling helmet is finished and we are ready to be summoned to fight for the Dark Lord. So you all can see the steps that I use to make my very own Easterling helmet. And hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this video. I know I did. I use some fabric techniques I've never used before, but I'm definitely filing those away to use on future projects. And if you would like to make one of these helmets for yourself, you can find a link to the template in the below description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, family, and anyone else you can think of. And if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or just want to say hi, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely respond to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.